Hey guys, so Lenny2261 was able to guess the card art from the last video with his clever comment about Grape Shot. If you want to be able to have your comment featured, just try and guess the background for the art here. What's up guys, welcome to Jank Divers, where we dive into the janky side of Commander. I'm Brent. And I'm Isaac. And today, we're looking at another viewer request, an Obika Pirate deck. Real quick, let's explain what Obeka does, okay? So, for four mana, it's a three four. It's an ogre wizard, and you tap it, and the player whose turn it is may end the turn. So that means you're gonna exile all spells and abilities from the stack, the player whose turn it is discards down to the maximum hand size, damage wears off, and this turn and until end of turn effects end. Why would this be a pirate commander? At first we didn't know, uh, but let's go ahead and look at this uh, this is comment that he requested for it. Uh, Obeka Pirates for next bid. I was like, wow, this sounds super spicy. Uh, I'll get right on it. So we noticed some new cards that actually worked quite well with this. And when we saw it, this was uh, basically our reaction. You know, just A plus over and over. It's so good. Like, incredible idea. So let's get into why the idea is so incredible. Because it's actually kind of complicated. The Encore ability. There are quite a few pretty decent pirates actually with this Encore ability. Uh, so basically what it is is you pay whatever the Encore price is uh, and exile the card with Encore from your graveyard. And then for each opponent, you create a token copy that attacks that opponent this turn if able. They gain haste uh, and you sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step and you activate only as a sorcery. Now, since this specifically mentions the end step, it will go on the, the stack during your end step. Once your end step starts, uh, in response to the ability that makes you sacrifice it, you can tap a Becca, end your turn, and the ability will get exiled. Uh, you will no longer have to sacrifice the tokens. Uh, you'll get to keep them. So this lets you create more pirates than uh, you normally would be able to and keep them around and keep attacking with them until they're killed by natural causes. Uh, so let's go over some of uh, the best Encore Pirates. Uh, Brent, would you like to take it away? Sure. So first up is going to be Amphin Mutineer for three and a blue, a 3-3 three, three Salamander Pirate. And when he enters the battlefield, you exile up to one target non-Salamander creature, and that creature's controller creates a 4-3 blue warrior salamander creature token and has encore for six another thing is that like you play this card once get the trigger then it dies and you encore it again it's like not only are you keeping way more copies than you should it's just straight value and when you have one like this that has removal stapled onto it it's this one is probably the best one it's in utter insanity then next we have coastline marauders for two and a red a zero three for a human pirate with Trample. 0-3 sounds kind of weird, but it gets better. Whenever Coastline Marauders attack, it gets plus one plus zero oh until end of turn for each land defending player controls. It has Encore for four and double red. You know, you're against that mono green Omnath guy who just has like five billion lands on turn three where you can show him the Coastline Marauders and deal a lot of damage to him. Kind of funny. Then we have Fathom Fleet Sword Jack for three and a red, a four three ogre orc pirate, sorry. Whenever Fathom Fleet Sword Jack attacks, it deals damage to target to the player or planeswalker it's attacking, equal to the number of artifacts you control. And an encore for six. We're gonna have a decent number of artifacts, not like a ton, but enough to make this ability matter. It's also just a four three, so like fairly efficient like stat line for its cost. A lot of pirates happen to incidentally create a treasure or two, or in some cases, a handful of treasures. And uh, I made sure that all of our ramp is based off of uh, artifacts. So we're using talismans and signets and whatnot. So we will have a handful of artifacts, but again, when you encore, uh, you're gonna be dealing a lot of damage because you'll get to put out four of these and with your commander they they could stay out for a couple of turns and just really do a ton of damage. Uh, we also have some other interesting things to do with a Becca. So again anything that mentions the end step is going to go on the stack. 
if something we have to sacrifice or exile at the end step, we can just cancel the ability by ending our turn while the triggers are on the stack. Uh, mimic that uh, for three mana has imprint. Whenever a non-token creature dies, you may exile that card. If you do, return each other card exiled with Mimic Vat to its owner's graveyard, and you can pay three mana and tap it to create a token that's a copy of a card exiled with Mimic Vat. It gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step. So this is a way that we can just clone basically whatever we want to, whether it's one of our pirates or one of our opponent's good creatures. The second it dies, we can just exile it under Mimic Vat and start creating copies and since it gets exiled at the beginning of the next end step we can just end the turn uh, counter that trigger that makes us sacrifice it and keep amassing whatever we're cloning with it. Mulm Echoes for four mana is an enchantment when it enters the battlefield choose a creature type uh, in this one we're going to choose pirates and whenever a non-token pirate is going to enter the battlefield under your control you get to create a token that's a copy of that creature it gains haste exile at the beginning and the next end step. So this is just uh, doubling up all of our pirates that we play. Uh, obviously it's very good with some of the pirates that you've already seen and you'll continue to see. Just keep that in mind when all of your, when pretty much all of your creatures are pirates, this just really uh, can get out of control pretty fast. Uh, Kindred Charge is pretty win more, but it's kind of really cool with our commander uh, for six mana we're going to choose a creature type and again all pretty much every single one of our creatures is a pirate for each pirate we control we're going to create a token copy that's a copy of that uh, creature and those tokens gain haste exile them at the beginning of the next end step we get to just double our entire board uh, with haste and we get to keep them if we have a Becca out there. If our board is already pretty good, our board is our board is now going to be very good. So it's a little bit more of a win more card, but we're, we're the jank divers. We're not the CDH divers. So we decided to include this as a really fun card. It's a fun card. Sometimes you just have to play fun cards. Next up, we have Zara Renegade Recruiter for three and then a blue and a red. It's a four three human pirate with flying, and whenever she attacks, you look at defending player's hand, you may put a creature card from it onto the battlefield under your control, tapped and attacking that player or planeswalker that control, return that creature to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. So you can use Obeka to end your turn, right as soon as that return that creature thing goes on the stack and exile it and keep the creature. So. Not only are you stealing creatures, you also get to attack with them right away. And you can do this like more than once. It's quite good. So we were talking earlier about uh, pirates that just happen to incidentally create treasure tokens. So we wanted to talk about a few of those. First up, we have Malcolm, Keen Eye Navigator for two and a blue. It's a two-two flying siren pirate. And whenever one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents, you create a treasure token for each opponent dealt damage. It has partner, but don't worry about that for this one. With Encore, you create a token for each opponent you have. So Malcolm plus Encore creatures, you'll be able to generate a lot of treasure tokens if your creatures can connect. You also just will be attacking a lot in a pirate deck. So this helps you ramp while doing what you wanted to do in the first place anyway. Dockside Extortionist for one and a red. Goblin Pirate, one, two, when he enters the battlefield, you create X treasure tokens, where X is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control. Like our deck that we're playing, a lot of decks ramp exclusively with artifacts. This helps you catch up to them extremely quickly. And in our deck, we, as we were just talking about, we can actually abuse the treasure tokens for advantages that aren't just ramp. And you know, you run against somebody's aura deck and you'll just make a absolutely silly amount of treasures card is incredible and then hole breacher a new one two and a blue for a three two merfolk pirate with flash if an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps instead you create a treasure token notice the wording instead means that you stop them from drawing extra cards and you get treasures not only is this card extremely annoying for your opponents and can shut down a lot of blue base decks or even like green base decks nowadays uh, you're also going to ramp a lot 
because people like to draw a lot of cards in Commander, self-included. So you can take advantage of this, especially with Flash. Like somebody puts a X10 Blue Sun Zenith on the stack or whatever, you just drop your whole breacher and draw 10 cards instead. And you create 10 tokens. Yeah, 10, 10 treasure tokens. Apologies. Uh, we also wanted to include, this is a tribal deck, so we wanted to put uh, some pirate lords uh, into the deck as well. So Admiral Beckett Brass is probably one of the best uh, pirate lords out there. For four mana, uh, it's a three, three human pirate and other pirates you control get plus one, plus one. And at the beginning of your end step, gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who has dealt combat damage by three or more pirates this turn. So uh, this is where it gets interesting because normally we're ending the turn on our end step with Obeka, you can choose to activate that at any time. So the way it works is if one or more triggers are going to go on the stack at the same time, so if you have a handful of things that are going to be happening on your end step, the player whose turn it is gets to decide which order those abilities get put on the stack. So what you can do is any end step abilities that you want to resolve, you can just uh, put at the, the very top of the stack so that they'll re resolve first and once it resolves then in response to the next one that's activating or whichever one down the line that you don't want to activate all the ones after that you can just tap a Becca after uh, the ones that you want to happen happen and the turn then and that will allow you to uh, get some of these good triggers that happen on your end step while still getting rid of the bad ones so this one lets you you know, steal permanents from players, which is very good. It also buffs up your pirates. So all around great card. Normally this would be your your pirate commander, but I think personally, I think that Obeka is a lot more fun of a choice. Yeah. So Corsair Captain for three mana uh, is a two two. It's from Jumpstart, uh, and that's that's the only time it's ever seen print, and it's a super cool card. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get to create a, tr a treasure token. So again, just another card that incidentally creates a treasure token. And other pirates you control get plus one, plus one. Uh, so this one's not legendary, so any of our cloning shenanigans uh, does work with Corsair Captain. Uh, Dire Fleet Neckbreaker, also not legendary, is a four mana three two. And attacking pirates you control get plus two, plus oh. So when we're on the offensive, this one creates a pretty substantial buff, actually, uh, especially with some of our Encore cards where uh, we get extra value and get to uh, make multiple attacks for one cost. can really just uh, put out a lot of damage this way. So next up, we just have some generally interesting things we can do with Obito. So first up is Final Fortune for Double Red and Instant. Take another turn after this one. At the end of that turn, you lose the game. Normally, this is risky, but with Obeka, we just end the turn as soon as that in lose the game trigger goes on the stack, and we, like, you know, don't lose the game. Glorious End for two and a red and instant in the turn, and at the beginning of your next end step, you lose the game. Now, the usefulness for this one is that Obeka or Obeka can only really end your own turn unless somebody helps you. So, this can let you time stop somebody if they're about to do something like very dangerous like say attack you go combo off or just if you wanted to be mean and you just wanted to end their turn right before they could even draw a card or it can actually work as a counter spell as well if somebody were mm -hmm. to play a board wipe or something and you know you are a tribal pirate deck at the end of the day so board wipes are going to set you back a lot so this does also work as a counter spell it's just one of the most versatile counter spell you'll ever see. Uh, we can dodge the downside, obviously, with our commander. And then Valakut Exploration, two in a red, and enchantment with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. And then at the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Valakut Exploration, put them into their owner's graveyard then Valakut Exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. This card is kind of interesting, as sometimes you won't end your turn, but you can if you want. So while the cards are exiled, they're basically in your hand, so you can always 
exile this trigger to keep them in your hand across multiple turns, especially if it's something like a counter spell, you might want that to stay there as you probably won't want to play that on your own turn. Or if somebody's low on health or say you exile something that you want in your graveyard for some reason, like an encore creature, you can just not end your turn and let the card proceed as normal and deal that damage. Kind of a versatile option here. Good card draw engine at the end of the day, regardless of what you do with it. Arumi of the Dead Tide for three mana is a one four. It's a merfolk wizard, uh, so it's not a pirate. But the effect is so good in our deck that we had to include it. So you tap it and exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have and target creature card in your graveyard gains Encore until end of turn. Uh, the Encore cost is equal to its mana cost. Now we've already talked about how good Encore is uh, with a Becca. So being able to pull out any pirate from our graveyard and create a copy of it for each opponent, it's, it's just ridiculously good when you don't have to exile those at the end of the turn and you can just keep them around. So uh, these are some of our best pirates that we can give Encore uh, Angrath's Marauders for 7 mana is a 4-4, so a steep price, but it has a really powerful effect. If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to a permanent or player instead. So let's say you have 3 opponents, which is the average size of a commander game. Um, you're going to create 3 copies of Angrath's Marauders. That's going to be double, then doubled again, then doubled again. So each of these bad boys are swinging for 32 damage uh, if you have three opponents. That's quite that's quite a substantial amount of damage. That's that's almost kill range with just you know one two card combo. Not to mention your other pirates that are also being doubled or well, tripled or whatever. Octuple yeah, yeah, in, this case. in this case. In this case, yeah. Uh, uh, Port Razor is also really cool to encore copy uh, for. For five mana, it's a 4-4 Orc Pirate. And whenever Port Razor deals combat damage to a player, you're gonna untap each creature you control. And after this combat phase, there is an additional combat phase. So when you're, when you're creating a copy and attacking each player, all of them get through. You're gonna take three additional combat phases and uh, it can't attack a player it has already attacked this turn. But when you untap all of your copies, you can attack Different cop different players, so uh, each copy can attack each player one time. So in a perfect world where nobody has any blockers, you're going to take nine, a total of ten combat steps, uh, which is absolutely ludicrous. So next up, we included a more interesting card in Dead Eye Quartermaster, which is three and a blue for a two-two human pirate. And whenever it enters, you search your library for an equipment or a vehicle card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. We don't have very many targets, so we just thought we'd put them on the screen for you. Lightning Grease for two colorless artifact equipped creature as Haste and Shroud with an equip zero. This is really good on our Obeka. As, as soon as people figure out what you're doing, they're gonna wanna destroy it. So being able to protect her is very useful. Then we have Conqueror's Galleon for a 4 mana artifact vehicle, it's a 210. Whenever it attacks, exile it at the end of combat, then return it to the battlefield transformed under your control. It has a crew 4, and the transform side is a land that can tap for a colorless. You can pay 2 and tap it to draw and discard a card. You can pay four and tap it to just draw a card. And then you can pay six and tap it to return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So just a very strong value engine, especially in an aggro deck like this one, being able to continuously draw cards or get counter spells or creatures back that were killed, etc. It's just a generally good card. And that has been it for Rebecca's Pirates. So let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, we think that this is personally a really sweet deck uh, if you want to see the rest of the list, go ahead and click on the link in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe.